Hello, welcome to Super Start Select, the only video game video show proven to actually lower cholesterol, reduce fine lines and wrinkles, and consolidate your existing debts. Oh, right, they called and they said we are not allowed to say that stuff anymore. What? Yeah, since uh, Mass Effect got done for false advertising, we, uh, we are no longer allowed to say Start Select reverses the seven signs of aging or brings beloved pets back from the dead or we're all fired. I've got to go take some things down. Hello, welcome to Super Start Select, the only video game video show proven to be the one you're watching right now. Hi, in this Friday's show there's news of Prey 2, which isn't cancelled but isn't out soon either, and Star Wars The Old Republic losing players. Then Witchering champion Cameron Robinson is here to share his wisdom on not dying in The Witcher 2. Stick around for those combat tips. And then a smattering of your comments on the last week's worth of shows, before finally we hop back into the GameSpot video host Cryotanks and await reanimation on Monday. Monday. On with the news. All right, a little while back the internet was awash with rumours that Prey 2 was mere days from a cancellation announcement, an announcement that would bring Seb's dreams of playing an abducted US marshal turned alien bounty hunter in a sci-fi noir setting to an end, and the reaction... But now there's good news and bad news. The good news, it's not cancelled. The bad news, it's not out in 2012 anymore either. Publisher Bethesda tells us the game development has not progressed satisfactorily this past year and the game does not currently meet our quality standards. They go on to say Prey 2 has shown great promise and they regret disappointing their fans, but we are determined only to release the AAA game that fans rightfully expect and are unwilling to compromise our quality standards to meet a release schedule. So, not entirely unlike the stated reasons for Darksiders 2's delay as announced yesterday. Disappointment no doubt abounds, but it's better to get it done right than get it done fast, isn't it? Comments below, please. Next in the news is Electronic Arts MMO Star Wars The Old Republic. Analyst Doug Kreutz of Cohen & Company is forecasting a 450,000 player exodus from the game from early 2012 to the end of EA's financial year in March 2013. In a report, the analysts estimated subscriber numbers hit a 1.7 million high in February of this year, but based on server statistics, predicts that the user base could drop to 1.25 million over the next 11 months. So why the en masse player upheaval, I hear you ask? Well, Cohen and Company predicts on. We believe that the apparent decline in subscribers is most likely due to a lack of end game content for the title, meaning that players who've hit the level cap have few compelling options in terms of ongoing gameplay. While the game got off to a good start, the relatively light amount of end game content does appear to be taking a toll. On top of this, Kreutz has suggested that this decline could be the reason EA has been sinking some serious coin into promoting the online role player. But most importantly of all, what do the greatest gaming analysts make of these numbers? I am, of course, talking about you guys. Are you playing The Old Republic? And if so, have you hit the level cap and found yourself twiddling thumbs? What's your thesis on compelling endgame content? All of that and more, if you will, in the comments below. Maybe you've just picked up The Witcher 2 for Xbox 360, or maybe you're just thinking about it, and maybe you could stand a few preliminary pointers on its sophisticated combat and combat preparation systems. Our Witchering expert Cameron Robinson has the very thing for you in this little feature, entitled How to Cut Fools in The Witcher 2. Are we really calling it? <laughs> Combat in The Witcher 2 is fast-paced, frantic, and at times ruthlessly unforgiving. So if approached in the wrong way, skirmishes can be short, bloody, and potentially frustrating. You will regularly find yourself outnumbered in combat against skilled foes, so success comes from knowing your weaknesses and playing to your strengths, using all the advantages a badass demon hunting mutant like Geralt has at his disposal. With the recent arrival of the Xbox 360 Enhanced Edition, we figured it was the perfect time to share some of our tips and tricks to provide newcomers to the series with an accessibility ramp up the steep learning curve of combat. While other games allow the quaffing of tasty health potions mid-combat, The Witcher 2 does not, instead emphasising preparation before battle. 
This means preemptively drinking potions and honing your blade with oil and stone. For the former, there are a number of potions available at the early stages of the game. Some straight up buff your stats or give new abilities, while others offer a trade-off, generously boosting some stats while hindering others. Make sure you get to know your potion options and use accordingly. As for your blade, oils and whetstones are great at giving a much needed damage boost. Some oils target specific enemy types, while others offer general damage increases. Try to observe your environment to predict your likely foes and coat your blade in the appropriate oil. Once the fighting starts, it's all about dispatching your enemies with skill. Geralt usually finds himself grossly outnumbered, so keep moving and work on whittling down their numbers while keeping yourself out of harm's way. Being surrounded is a death sentence in The Witcher 2, as unlike Assassin's Creed for example, your foes will not take turns to attack. So keep moving, dive in, light attack and then get the hell out of there. Like any good hunter, try to pick off the weakest first. Any blade can kill Geralt, but those without armour can easily be dispatched, quickly levelling the playing field. Enemies carrying shields will attempt to charge and knock you to the floor, making you super vulnerable. To take them down, wait for them to commit to an attack, then dodge and circle around behind them for a deadly blow. This works well for any heavily armoured foe, as backstabs do extra damage. Archers are also a big threat, so put some cover between you or close the distance, forcing them to draw blades. Signs are arguably Geralt's biggest advantage in combat. One of the most useful is Quen, which produces a magical shield preventing damage from enemy attacks. While it only takes a couple of hits to dissipate, Quen gives you that opportunity to take a risk and dive in for a killing blow. Use it and use it often. Casting Ard sees a kinetic force ripple from Geralt's hand before slamming into the enemy. This can knock back, knock over, or even stun completely, leaving the poor sucker wide open for a gruesome one-hit kill sequence. In some cases, Ard can even be used to blast enemies off cliff edges. Yarden, or Wyrden, is a magical trap which causes damage and immobilizes foes. Use this sign to split up your enemies, or to leave a dangerous opponent wide open for some heavy attacks. Igni. Igni? Anyway, it's a handy fire attack, causing incineration damage to the target, and it's useful against anyone and everyone. Finally, Axi. Jai? Well, let's go with Axi. Turns an enemy on the others. This sign requires a good few seconds to activate, however, so make sure there's plenty of space between you and your opponents before you cast. Geralt can use traps, bombs and daggers in the middle of battle. Each can be instrumental in giving you the edge in a fray. Some traps are great for immobilizing your foes, creating much needed space between you and your enemies, while others, like the conflagration trap, can cause massive explosive damage to multiple targets. Bombs can be used to deal damage to multiple foes, while throwing daggers take a huge chunk of health from a single target, great for combating dangerous foes from a distance. Finally, one of the simplest ways to decrease your chances of repeatedly dying a horrible, horrible death is to pick the most useful abilities. You should start by bolstering your defense. First to consider is hardiness, which significantly increases your health bar known as vitality. Next on the list should be parrying, which lets you block pointy objects from all directions. Very handy. Once you progress a little farther, all the other talent trees should open up, offering a myriad of opportunity. However, your first port of call should definitely be the repost ability, allowing Geralt to perform a deadly counter-attack. Though the combat in The Witcher 2 may start with a steep learning curve, once you master the basics, the tense and frenetic combat quickly becomes really satisfying, conveying a feeling of significant power and vulnerability at the same time. We hope this advice has been useful to you, and if you have any more tips to successful butchery in The Witcher 2, be sure to post them in the comments box. Happy witchering!
We've ticked off all the other boxes on Friday's to-do list, and all that's left is to win the hearts and minds of the viewership we so desperately love. Because, as the saying goes, win the crowd, win your freedom. And boy, do we miss the taste of free air. Also, our families. So, we dash over to the comments section of Start Select, wherein we find the debate heating up over Street Fighter publisher Capcom. If you missed it, Capcom has been defending its 12-character paid DLC, which was already present on the retail disc of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And then some hackers hacked it open early. Producer of the game on the Vita, Tomo Akiano, told us while he was impressed by the hack, he was disappointed it led to some playing with the new characters and others not. But it seems like the damage might already be done, and some of you guys are unhappy, not least Griever832. I'm glad it got hacked, good on them. On disc DLC is complete BS. I think this point was previously established with Mass Effect 3. If you can put it on the disc, throw it in the game. Right, but why stop there? I say, if there's still space on the disc, why not include another smaller game like Lost Planet Cross Dark Souls or Mega Man Cross Witcher? It's an idea in progress. I'm sure it is. But hey, not all of you are lining up at Capcom's offices with torches and pitchforks. GameSpotter Renu27 is one such viewer who feels for Anno-san. Sounded to me like Tomo Akiano was just upset by the fact that there were some players who didn't have access to the DLC content while others did. What a legend. Not every developer speaks like they actually care about their fans. Moving on, Halo 4's worldwide launch date was also revealed this week, with Microsoft announcing the game would hit shelves on the 6th of November. We wanted to know your thoughts on the return of Master Chief, if you'd be noting down the dates or shrugging it off for a newer, younger franchise. GameSpot user Mr. Chario jumped in with his hopes for the future of the series. I just hope Halo 4 isn't another version of multiplayer over story. I personally played the Halo series for the stories. The last few were more multiplayer over story. Halo is a great universe one can explore if they but try. We hear you, Chario-san. We keep our fingers crossed that the story will be equal parts riveting, enthralling and dangerously sexy. Because if recent space set galaxy adventures are anything to go by, it's going to be up to the eyeballs in homosexual action. I think you know what I want. Similarly, Monster 637 hasn't been enamoured of Halo multiplayer in recent years. He thinks it's dated. Like the Halo campaigns, but multiplayer is bleh. Bullet-sponging boredom nightmare. That early 90s style generic FPS style makes CODs seem like groundbreakers. And this week's award for Hardest Tron goes directly to Jersey Carter 15, who in the comments section skids in broadside caps lock on bellowing. Halo is another Call of Duty and stop crying and buy the DLC, you cheap noobs. Blasting the issues of both Halo and Street Fighter Cross Tekken in a single all caps volley. We salute you, you magnificent troll. And that's the end of the show once again. Star Select returns on Monday. Thanks for your time and we'll show ourselves out. Similarly, Monster 637 hasn't been endamored. Enamored? Why do I say endamored? Nothing's ever been endamored. <laughs> <laughs> this is my keep, side. Keep trying to get closer my to the side. and he keeps pulling away. No. Oh. <laughs> Seb? Yeah? Can we go yet? I don't know. My arm's kind of tired. Yeah, me too. I miss my family. Do we have to stay like this forever? Let's make a break for it. I think we should. On Ready? three, go! <laughs>